Hello and welcome to another Scardcast tactical video. Today we continue to look at the Craftworld Eldar Codex with the next of the HQ choices, the Warlock Conclave. Let's begin. Hello, and welcome to another Scardcast tactical video. We continue to look at the Eldar Craftworld book. And today we're looking at the Warlock Conclave, which is one of the units that you can select in the Craftworld book. Now, it is an HQ choice, and um, it's important to note that I do these videos in two parts. One, I talk about what a Warlock Conclave is, its unit choices, its options in a tactical form built into the Craft War book. Secondly, for any of you Cabalite warriors out there, I talk about them in the terms of an allied contingent or, you know, to play in within your other armies. So, let's begin. Of course, leave a comment down below if you'd like to know, sub, comment, you know, all that good stuff. We appreciate the support. Warlock Conclave. When the warlocks of the craft world join their minds, the fate of worlds can hinge upon their actions. Whilst the Autarchs deliver curt instructions to their squad leaders, the Farseers whisper their subtle intent via telepathic link to the warlocks that fight alongside them, and in doing so, they change the course of the battle. Maelstroms of force swirl around each warlock conclave, growing more potent the larger the Brotherhood becomes. These unknowable energies allow the battleseers to sap the life essence of the foe, conjure blasts of psychic fire to boil out from their mystical third eyes, or grant unnatural strength to those Eldar nearby. As true sons of Cain, these militant psychers will plunge into combat at the slightest provocation. Witch blades and singing spears are swung in graceful arcs leaving coruscating webs of energy behind them as the conclave carves through the ranks of their adversaries. They do so with joy in their souls. For all the seers of the Eldar hosts, the warlocks are the fiercest and most violent of all. So there are a bunch of psychers in a big group that like to kill stuff. Awesome. <laughs> They're 35 points apiece. Uh, they have weapon skill ballistic skill 4, strength and toughness 3, unless you make them a skyrunner, so put them on a jet bike, in which case they become toughness 4. They have one wound at initiative 5, and they have one attack, leadership 8. They do not have an armor save unless they have a jet bike as a Skyrunner has a 3 plus armor save. And the unit composition is one Warlock. Now their war gear and their special rule and their Brotherhood of Psychers rule is really how you would use um, the Warlock Conclave. More as a warp power dice generator like battery. So they come with rune armor which um, uh, gives them a 4 plus invulnerable save and um, I believe that's all it does let's double check because I'd hate to, um, to tell you guys that it didn't have anything else that was pretty cool um, and uh, I really like rune armor yeah it's just a 4 plus invulnerable save they have a shuriken pistol 12 inch pistol a witch blade which is armor bane flesh bane so that's pretty cool and an L and the Skyrun has an Eldar jet bike so he's super super fast they do have Ancient Doom as a rule, so they hate Slanesh, and they take fear tests against them, but they hate them. Um, they do have Battle Focus, uh, and they do have Fleet. The Warlock is the only one that has Fleet, the On Foot. And they are a Brotherhood of Psychers, so check out the 40k rulebook as to how the Brotherhood of Psychers physically 
works. Now, their big rule is that they are they have what's called a communion of minds. So a unit containing one to three warlocks is mastery level one. A unit containing four to six is mastery level two. And a unit containing seven or more warlocks is mastery level three. And you can have up to nine additional warlocks. You can have up to ten in the unit. So if the mastery level is reduced as a, as a result of models being removed, you can select one of the powers they have and you have to discard it, it's immediately lost. What's really cool though is you can have 10 psychers um, with three powers, uh, four to six psychers with two different powers, and three different guys with one power. Uh, <clears throat> and the power is lost if you kind of go down. But you can choose which one to throw away, so that's pretty cool. And the unit generates a warp charge for each warlock or sky run in the unit, regardless of the mastery level. So. If you have three Warlocks and you're Mastery Level 1, you still generate three dice, which is really cool. If you have four to six, if you have six Warlocks, you're Mastery Level 2, but you're generating six dice. So, even though they don't necessarily have a lot of different powers, um, by bringing a lot of Warlocks, you're bringing a lot of ability to generate Warp dice even though they might only use a few for their own powers, that they would really help the Farseers and the other psychers in the army generate the dice they need, or uh, give you some more dice when you're trying to fight enemy psychers. Being at 35 points, um, you know, they're relatively cheap for what you get. You get a cool little character with an invulnerable save and a good weapon. So they are quite a beat stick force in and of itself. Now, you can upgrade them to have singing spears, which is a 12 inch strength 9 shooting weapon, and you can upgrade them at 15 points model to have jet bikes. But if you upgrade one to have a jet bike, you have to upgrade all of them to have a jet bike, so it's all or nothing. So within the craft world book, a conclave <clears throat> is, you know, your pseudo psychic Death Star unit. Now the way you know I've seen them run many a time, you run them all on jet bikes for the higher toughness and increased mobility, and then you add in Farsias. Now because they are an HQ choice, in a normal combined arms detachment, um, they do require you to take, um, you know, uh, you, it, they will take up one HQ slot. Some tournaments allow multiple combined arms detachments, some tournaments don't, um, as an allied detachment, you can run it as an HQ choice, being that it is HQ. So you could run just a Warlock Conclave, if you wanted, as an HQ choice, and you could just have one Warlock, but he's not an independent character, so they're not a character at all. They're just infantry. They're not, they're not characters, which means they couldn't really be your, your Warlord. But you could have a 35-point Warlock as your HQ, and then spend the points somewhere else, if you wanted to. Um, now, the, where they come into use is by psychically buffing them up, you know, using runes of battle. Uh, they can have demonology, Santic, or runes of battle. So, use the runes of battle to stop the enemy, make them better, make the psychic deaths are awesome, make them invisible with invisibility and a farseer in the unit. Um, you know, just run around killing stuff, um, you know, because they're very tough to get rid of. And things you have to be careful of are things like collects as assassins that'll just negate all your psychic ability whatsoever and murder you pretty much instantly. Um, so just be careful with that sort of thing, especially if they're in a drop pod. Um, but, you know, it is a pretty straightforward army. I mean, unit. Um, you, if, especially if you make a big unit on jet bikes, you add um, one or two farsiers, depending on what you're running, or an allied character, or Bataroth to give them a uh, hit and run, you know, just and a two plus armor save, because he can move 18, so you can keep up with the jet bikes. Um, you're looking at a very nasty combat list, a uh, unit, and use it as such. Put it in the middle of the table and force people to deal with it, because, you know, unless your psychic dice don't go off, they're a very, very tough unit to deal with, and on jet bikes they can jink, um, they have an armor save, they have the invulnerable save. They can take down anything from a gargantuan creature with their arm, uh, their flesh bane weapons, 
all the way to vehicles with their armor bane weapons. Uh, they can all they can have shooting weapons. They have their shuriken catapults on their jet bikes. They can jump shoot jump. They can turbo boost thirty six inches. Like they are like fast and they can be beefy. Um, you know they are they do get expensive if you're spending fifty points on a jet bike warlock, but they are worth every point if you're running a big nasty killer unit. So let me know what you have found. You know personally. I don't mind running them as a little foot unit, you know, running around with a couple of warlocks and a farseer, you know, doing some psychic powers and, you know, keep hanging them around an, uh, an avatar of Cain or something, and just in the, in more of a thematic style conclave. But in competitive play, the warlock conclave is a, is a very good linchpin unit. Now it gets even better when you look at the the <clears throat> the formation of the warlock. Um, the Seer Council, which includes a Warlock Conclave and um, a couple of Farseers. Of course, they become a psychic bond with the Farseers, and you can have two Farseers and a Conclave. So you can have like two base Farseers and a Conclave, freeing up your HQ slots, putting three different HQ units into one formation, um, and then they become psychic, psychically might, which means they pass their they, their warp charge tests on a 3 plus instead of a 4 plus. So it's a lot easier for them to get a lot of powers off, you know, which makes them really nasty. And then as an HQ choice, you can take like an Autark or something. So keep that in mind when you're playing the Eldar craft worlds. Uh, when you're playing against a Seer Council, uh, how you fight against them will really depend on if they brought a character to get them hit and run, if you have any anti psychic defense if you just want to ignore them or if you want to just speed bump them and just feed them units that they can kind of munch on um, while you deal with the rest of the army. So let me know what you think and how the Warlock Conclave fits into your Craft World Force. Now to part two, as a Dark Eldar um, commander, um, I have never really used a Warlock Conclave because of the fact that um, an allied detachment uh, would require one HQ, and I prefer the Autark because it helps with my Dark Eldar strategy as a whole. But using the Warlord Conclave, uh, the Warlock Conclave in a Seer Council formation, really adds a lot to a Dark Eldar army combined arms detachment, primary detachment, being that it will give you a lot of psychic support, whether it's psychic. Um, uh, defense or psychic offense, which the Dark Eldar do not have. So it does come at a hefty investment, and I would highly recommend you do them on the jet bikes because, preferably, I personally think that's the easiest way to go. But the Warlock Conclave has to have at least five models, um, so three, um, uh, three Warlocks and two Farsia. So you're looking at 150 points for three Warlocks with jet bikes and 230 points for the two Farsiers with jet bikes. So at a minimum you're looking at 380 points for that little five-man unit. You know, but you're looking at um, three psychic warp dice from the Warlocks six psychic board dice from that's at least that's nine dice total ten dice at a minimum with your d6 roll of psychic offense and nine dice minimum or sorry ten dice minimum of psychic defense but those ten dice become really important because you can cast them on a three plus the farseers have their runes that let you re-roll failed or passed and you know any dice that you want to you know pass or fail they all have the three plus armor saves they all have the invulnerable saves, they can take down gargantuan creatures, they can go after tanks, um, they can they do relatively well in close combat, and then add in, you know, a Harlequin character or Baharoth or some sort of character that gives them hit and run, and they can't be tied down in combat. So you can see how the Warlock Conclave works really well when you're kind of combining it all into a sort of um, uber unit. But use it. You can make it as big as you want. You can make it as small and trimmed down as you want. And uh, it really depends on what you want to use it for. But if you're going big, go big. And if you 
you know, just want to take a few warlocks, you might as well just be better off taking a farseer or two and using their psychic abilities. So, I really want to hear if you've used a warlock conclave. Let me know what the good matchups for the warlock conclave are, what aren't. Personally, I think that um, a warlock conclave on jet bikes is very durable, and you can just throw it at the enemy and really just watch the enemy keel over. But you, I feel you have to watch out as things like knights and things like that that can just stomp on you, and um, and the stomps just like annihilate them. You know, if they don't kill them in combat. So just be careful, as it is a beefy unit, like any Death Star, it either works or it doesn't work. There's no grey area, really. And uh, let me know. But thanks a lot for watching the Tactical Series videos. We will continue them. Uh, make sure you check the links down below for different videos, the other Tactical Series, the Battle Reports. Um, go on Patreon if you haven't had a look at how the channel uh, community support works. I'd like to know what you think about that. So I'd like to get a new camera, some more lights for the studio, that sort of thing. Um, and to continue these uh, discussions and videos. But thanks a lot. This is Scario Grateful Host, out, and we'll see you next time.